Hey, Seth, it's Anthony. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, uh, I'm at the uh, bus station downtown. Can you come get me? I thought you were going on tour. Yeah, no. Um, I'm not going on tour, man. Um, I don't know, are you busy? Can you come? Yeah, for sure, I can come. I'm not doing much. I was just going on a Tinder date. Oh, fuck. I didn't know I was going to ruin your date, man. <laughs> Honestly, I was just going because she said yes when I asked her out. That's actually the only reason I was going. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. But hold on. How come you're not going on tour? I don't know. I, it almost feels like I was getting on that bus for the same reason that maybe you were going on that Tinder date. I do not see the parallel, but fuck it. I'll be there in like 10 minutes. Yeah, went to this for my date. I'm just gonna close with this. Dude, I can't do this right now. My voice is like the last thing I wanna hear. Yeah, sure. The song sucks anyways. So? What happened? You wanna go on tour? What are you, Madonna? I'm not feeling it, man. What? You've been jerking off to that tour for like months now. I can't explain it, man. I was set to get on the bus, be in Toronto tomorrow, great venue. It's like when the album came out, everything's, everything's different now. And my mind just shifted all of a sudden. You weren't excited? No, I was really excited. I mean, I'm still excited, but it's not about that. I don't know, man. Just, I'm just not in the mood to talk about it, really, man. Can you just drive me home? Uh, no. No fucking way, man. We gotta get you on that last bus. What am I, what are you gonna do? What do you suggest I do, then? Uh, we, how about we catch the last bus to Toronto, and then we can call it a day. Look, I, I went out, rented a car to go pick up a date, bring her to a bar, but now I have you. Yeah. Somehow I still want to go to a bar, though. What's your point? I want to go to a bar. Just drive the fucking car. Do you mean my electric car? Sirens on my tail, I got angels on my leather All right, what's wrong? I want to die, Seth. All right, that's what's wrong. I want to die and go home. In that order, though? Okay, look, this is great, okay? This is actually shaping up to be, like, an awesome date. Thank you. I'm glad that me self-destroying my career is making you happy. Okay, then. Why didn't you go on tour? We're at a bar now, so you can tell me honestly. For one thing, my hands weren't shaking at all. I just, I felt complacent. You know, I, I didn't want to start something important feeling I deserved it, because that was not fucking it, man. I just, I wanted to live past the dream. You know, that I set for myself so many years ago. Right. It's hard to believe that it's it's finally on top of me now, you know. And I was looking forward to feeling nervous, you know. So. You know, I think the same thing happened to me last week. What do you mean? I went to a strip club for the first time last week. Same thing happened to Dude, me. Dude, I cannot believe this. I thought for once, just once, you might have an answer for me. A real well, solution. Hold on. And here you it's are. It's a good analogy. Tits. Okay, give it a second. I have a story here, all right? All right. All right. Yeah. 
I can't picture you in a strip club anyway, mm, so. Neither can I. I think that's why I did it. Remember what you told me once about getting out of my comfort zone? Yeah. Because I was there. And I asked the girl for a lap dance. So you go to the back booth or whatever it's called. And she asked me how many songs I'd like. And I say, uh, two songs, you know? And now I'm getting excited because I'm getting a professional lap dance, you know? And like, oh, she had mad skills, man. She could have been in the Olympics or something. Anyway, um, so, you know, I'm touching her and all that. And at some point I just, uh, I just, I just hugged her for like, you know, five songs. She hugged me back. She just, just stayed like that, just hugging. I think this might be the saddest story I've ever heard. Sad. I know. <laughs> sad. It's sick. That's sad. You paid for hugs. I don't give a shit. I feel like affection's a weird thing, you know? It comes from not knowing if you're ever gonna feel alone again. Yeah. Strippers do have big hearts. But man, I hate this. I go do something, right, that's completely different from what I usually do, but I always end up doing it my own way, you know? What's the point of trying something new if I can't change? You know, I don't think the change necessarily comes from the doing of the action. Maybe, maybe more from the intention of the action. Oh, by the way, do you think strippers pay taxes? What's the analogy, all right? Where were you going with this? What, what does this have to do with me not going on tour? Oh, you didn't get it. I, I never get what you're talking about. Okay, easy. All right, here's the genius of this analogy, okay? My experience at the strip club was amazing, right? But kind of meaningless. You know, I needed a hug, but I went for a lap dance. You know something's wrong, but you can't quite put your finger on it. You didn't want to mess up your tour. That's the lap dance. You felt something was missing, right? That's yeah. a hug. Right. So I think the answer is to get a hug from me. I'll do it, sure. Sad. <sighs> Dude, what are you doing? Get off of me. Good hug, man. Man, I thought you actually had a real answer for me, but I can see it's the normal set. Come on, don't be like that. I have an electric car. I'm gonna go to both. I have an electric car. It's just outside. You're not doing it. Then you leave. I've never seen anybody cover one of my songs before. Well, I never covered a song in front of the guy who wrote it before. I'm Anthony. I know. I'm Alicia. This is a weird coincidence. I just downloaded your album last month. Oh, yeah? Well, that's eight bucks you owe me. I'm sorry. It's good, though. I liked it. Thanks. You come here a lot, or? I like to sing. Yeah. This is more legit than karaoke. Oh, totally, totally. What'd you do that song for? Just curious, I mean, why you picked that one? I love that song, but I gotta go.
My bus really? is coming. Yeah. You don't want to stick around? I mean, you just knocked that out of the park in there. Keep making music. I might buy your next album. doing in that bar tonight but to have you come in there and play my song like that and then and then just disappear I just can't do it sure you can maybe any other night but not tonight it felt more like a like a sign than a coincidence a sign of what I don't know I'll tell you what, you can walk me to the next bus stop. Yeah. I owe you for downloading your album. Okay, this way? Yeah. All right. We're even now. God damn everybody that started to hate you. Fuck them all, I evolved, it's my coronation. I'm the reason that your girl having contemplation conversations meaning that she coming with me. Hey, do you like the Backstreet Boys? Vegetarian? Yeah, actually, I am. Well, I'm actually ready to become a vegetarian. Oh, yeah? Mentally, though, not financially. <laughs> to start. So, do you like being a waitress? No, not really. It's not my dream gig. I'm actually an anthropology student. Oh, cool. Mm, yeah. Style over substance. Love it. Do you know, I can save you like. 10 years of anthropology studies right now in like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Did you know that if you went to a strip club, you could also get hugs? Well, did you know mm -hmm. that it takes eight hugs a day to survive, mm -hmm. 10 to maintain, and 14 to grow? Hi, I'm Seth. I like KD and I rent electric cars. <laughs> so, you like music, huh? Yep. You got any songs of your own? No. God, no. I mean, I wanted to be Fiona Apple, and I wrote some songs, but it just wasn't my thing. Anyway, why bother when Mark Knopfler is still making music, you know? <laughs> True. But I like listening to music more than I like writing it. I mean, it just feels good connecting with what other people have been through. I'm not really wired like that. No? No. I can't relate to something so deeply that, you know, I'll, I, I, I wouldn't feel like I had something original to say for myself, you know? I don't know. I think you get something out of relating to other people. It's like Johnny Cash said, focus on the pain. It's the only thing that's real. And when you see your pain somewhere else, it helps you understand it better. Yeah, but if you pay attention to your own pain long enough, you eventually kind of get a gift from it. And for guys like me, that gift comes in the form of a song. Good enough for you. You tell me all the things I 
things I said Should have kept them to myself instead You tell me that you've had enough You locked it easy, now you hate it Stop. You tell me that you're mine You know what turned me off writing? What's that? I just didn't want everyone to know everything about my life. Yeah, I wasn't, I'm not ready for it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not embarrassed about my album. You know, it's kind of personal. Yeah, it is. So how do you walk around with everyone knowing everything about you? Well, I mean, it's not really uh, about your past so much as it is just a snapshot of kind of everything that's happened to you up to that point. Hmm. Yeah, I always thought the first albums were about reflecting. Yeah, but without being nostalgic. You know, that's the subtle difference. Hmm. I mean, it's only later that artists can't help but romanticize the worst moments of their life. First albums, they don't do that at all. You wanna check it out? Yeah. Where to? What for? What for? There's river I've crossed before. Bright pearl. Bright pearl. Rise from the deep. Rise from the deep. Black pearl. I know you're talking to me. Nothing hiding behind curtain walls. I just, I just, I just kind of wrote this today, so we'll just roll with it. It's, okay. It'll stay pretty much the same the whole way through. Okay. Now I'll just do this. I don't know where I've been. You sure made impressions. Where you stand, I can't pretend. Hello. 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 That was fun. <laughs> yeah. See? How can you look back at your life and not be nostalgic about the good memories? There, how do I, how do I describe it? There's this thing about where you go back to your, your uh, house you grew up in. You know, like, the bedrooms are small, every room is small, you know. But at the time, it's your whole world. You know, that's, that's how first albums are supposed to feel, you know? Small, but at the time, they were your whole world, you know? Yeah. I hope mine feels like that later. You know, my mom loved Marcel Proust author and she told me that he wrote about what it was like to eat this cake he had as a kid later when he was all grown up and he described the 
the rush of memories he had when he took a bite. And I get the same rush of memories when I listen to one of my favorite songs. And that makes me think of her. She sounds cool. Yeah, she was. Talking about what you said earlier about uh, Johnny Cash, you know, focus on the pain, that's the only thing that's real. I think in my case, I'd add, you know, focus on your fears and how you overcome them because they're the only things that are always going to be there. You know, it's like there's no medicine or time for changing. But I know for me, at least I have music. Oh, yeah, uh, you never did tell me why you did uh, Rock and Roll Baby, why you picked that song. Uh, it's not your best song, but it's my favorite. <laughs> why is that? Because of Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway? Yeah, um, Hemingway had this <laughs> theory. He called it the theory of omission. You know it? Uh-uh. Okay, so it's this idea that when you tell a story, you don't have to give every single detail. When you omit something, it actually makes the story stronger because mm. we fill the gap with our feeling of what's missing. And every time I listen to your song, even though I know it by heart, I get the sense that there's more to it and I'll never really know all of it. And that must be the definition of sacred the part of people that will never really get to know. Can you hear me speaking? Oh 
stars.